This is AutoLine Daily with the latest news in the global automotive industry. Before we get into the news, we've got to tell you about today's Auto Line After Hours. Sandy Monroe will be back on the show, and we're going to deconstruct the tooling costs of Tesla Cybertruck. As you've heard us report, we believe the radical styling of the truck was done deliberately to hold down tooling costs. So how much money could Tesla save taking this approach? Tune in this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time as John, Gary, and Frank Marcus from Motor Trend bring you some of the best insights into the automotive industry. Okay, now the news. The Trump administration is backing off its efforts to freeze fuel economy standards at 2020 levels, but it's still moving forward to roll back the requirements enacted during the Obama administration. The final proposal has been sent to the White House Office of Management and Budget for final review. While the details aren't public yet, the Detroit News reports that it's expected to call for a 1.5% annual increase in fleet-wide fuel economy average between 2021 and 2026. That's lower than the 5% increases previously required. While the administration has given up on freezing the rules, the less stringent requirements aren't likely to satisfy the state of California or environmentalists. At a time when most automakers are downsizing their engines, Porsche is going in the opposite direction. The Boxster and Cayman GTS will not be available with a turbocharged four-cylinder after 2019 because it's being replaced by a naturally aspirated four-liter inline six. The engine makes nearly 400 horsepower and when paired with a six-speed manual transmission, 100 kilometers an hour comes in four and a half seconds. As you would expect, the exhaust had to change and the cars now come standard with a sports system that enhances the inline six's sound. Other changes include a standard sports suspension system, a 20 millimeter, or roughly three quarter of an inch lower ride height, and a mechanical limited slip differential. The new Boxster and Cayman GTS first go on sale in Germany this March. And in somewhat related news, the Toyota Supra will follow its fraternal twin, the BMW Z4, and offer a four-cylinder option as well as a six. The four-cylinder is a turbocharged two-liter that makes 255 horsepower and is mated to an eight-speed automatic. With that setup, the car will do zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.2 seconds, which is over a second slower than the six-cylinder version. But what may appeal to some customers is that it's 220 pounds lighter than the six. The four-cylinder Supra goes on sale in Europe in March with other markets to soon follow, but no word yet if it's coming to the U.S. According to the Center for Automotive Research in Ann Arbor, Michigan, U.S. labor costs for GM, Ford, and FCA will go up significantly under the new UAW contract. GM's average hour labor cost is now $63 an hour, but it will go to $71 an hour by 2023. Ford's average hourly labor cost, now $61 an hour, is going to $69, and FCA's cost is now $55 and will go to $66 by the end of the contract. Meanwhile, the non-union foreign automakers in the United States pay about $50 an hour, and that will only go to $52 by 2023. These numbers include all labor costs, including wages, benefits, vacation time, and profit sharing, if it's offered. Another day, another car company announces it's getting into the passenger drone business. So far, Geely, Daimler, and Hyundai, to name a few, have announced plans to invest in passenger drones. Now Toyota says it's getting in on the act. It just invested $394 million in a California startup called Joby Aviation. Toyota will lend its expertise in manufacturing, quality, and cost controls for development and production. Interestingly, it will be an all-electric drone and what people in the business prefer to call a VTOL, which stands for Vertical Takeoff or Landing. Most other companies developing drones are going the hybrid electric route because they don't believe that batteries alone can get the job done. Obviously, Joby and Toyota 
don't quite see it that way. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. There's a lot of news about electric vehicles today, so let's get to that news. Last month, the EPA range for the Porsche Taycan Turbo was revealed, and it was surprisingly low, only 201 miles. And now the EPA range for the faster Taycan Turbo S has been revealed at 192 miles. It's not too surprising it's lower, since the Turbo S has more horsepower, torque, and bigger wheels than the regular version. Hyundai and Kia are investing 100 million euro in a company called Arrival to co-develop electric commercial vehicles. Arrival's scalable electric platform will be used for small and medium-sized electric vans and other products for logistics, on-demand ride hailing, and shuttle services. Hyundai and Kia say the partnership will help them meet growing demand for eco-friendly vehicles in Europe because remember, many major cities say they will eventually ban internal combustion engine vehicles. California is one of Tesla's most important markets, but has it reached its peak in the state? According to a report from Dominion Cross Cell, which collects data from state motor vehicle records, found that Tesla registrations dropped by nearly half in the Golden State during the fourth quarter in 2019 compared to the prior year. Nearly 13,600 Teslas were registered last quarter compared to over 25,400 the prior year, a drop of 46%. The report says the company may have hit its ceiling in the U.S. because it hasn't exceeded its 2018 results for five months now. So it's a good thing Tesla has its plant in China up and running so it can offset sales there. Speaking of Tesla in China, the company is planning to open a research and design center in the country in order to make, quote, Chinese-style vehicles. Reuters reports Tesla set up a WeChat account to post a recruitment notice, but it didn't reveal where or when the center will open. As we said in the previous story, Tesla needs to boost sales in China, so it makes sense that it would create vehicles to appeal to consumers in that market. As we've reported, sales of electric vehicles are small compared to the overall car market, but there's a couple of bills that hope to kickstart EV sales. The New Jersey legislature just passed a bill that gives $5,000 rebates for the purchase of an EV with 200 miles of range or more. EVs with less range, including plug-in hybrids, receive a prorated rebate of $25 per mile. And in the U.S. Congress, Representative Debbie Dingell from Michigan introduced a bill to spend $2 billion annually to develop and encourage the adoption of EVs. These incentives are important for EV adoption because, as we've said, sales of electric vehicles plunge without them. We've posted a lot of content from CES last week, but we just put up another video. And if you're into electric cars and startups, we encourage you to take a look at it. John spent some quality time with Karsten Breitfeld, the CEO of Faraday Future, riding around in the sumptuous back seat of one of their FF91s. We just let the cameras roll and the conversation got pretty interesting, especially with Karsten talking about his personal experience of leaving his comfy position at BMW and diving headfirst into the chaotic world of startups. You can click on the link to the headline in the story in today's show notes, find it in the Autoline on the Road section of our website, or look for it on our YouTube channel. That wraps up today's show, though. Thanks for watching. Join us again tomorrow.